Hello everyone. Welcome to video 7 of chapter 2. In this video, we'll cover an example from chapter 2.3. This type of model are called the production model. Let's take a look at the setting. So, you are the producer, you are supposed to produce a list of products. Okay, there could be several of them. And each of them will have a price you can sell. And you also know what is the profit you will make for selling each of them. Then in order to produce, you would need a list of raw materials. There could be several of them. They will cost money. And then you will have to hire laborers. And you will have um, equipment to produce them. So your goal here would be to maximize the profit using limited resources. So you know the resources are not infinite. Okay. And which implies that you want to minimize the cost. And then at the same time, there will be some production requirement that you have to produce at least a certain amount of uh, your products. Okay. So the goal for this example here is for us to learn how to do a mathematical modeling, giving a word problem written in words describing to you the situation. How could we introduce variable and write out a mathematical model for it. Okay, let's get started. We now take the example 2.3.1 in the textbook. In this example, we are going to produce boats, and there are two types of boats. We call it type A and type B. And there are various of resources needed in this production. Let's focus on the following. So let's say they are made of aluminum. And uh, each of them will take a certain machine time to do it. And then once the machine is done with it, it needs to be finishing, like painting or whatever. There are finishing labor involved. Okay, so all these informations are listed in the following table. Let's go through it. So the first column are both types, type A and type B. Okay, and the second column is uh, aluminum. So for type A, it takes 50 pounds of aluminum, type B, 30 pounds of aluminum. And the third column is machine time. So type A boat, each one takes six minutes, and type B takes five minutes. So type A is uh, requiring more machine work. And then this is the fourth column is about finishing labor. So type A requires three hours and type B is more labor intensive. It requires five hours. Okay. And the last column is the profit. So if you make one boat of type A and sell it or give it to the distributor, the profit you make is $50, and for the type B, actually, you profit a bit more. You have a $60 profit. But then, at the same time, um, the resources are limited, which is in the last row. So, you have total amount of aluminum, 2,000 pounds, not more than that. 
and then for the machine, the total time you have is three hundred minutes. You cannot do more than that. And then the finishing labor. Let's say you have hired a group of workers, and they can work maximum two hundred hours total. And um, so, um, even though a comment on that, the finishing labor. So total finishing labor is two hundred hours, and you have workers that you hired. So if they work less than 200 hours, they are paid the same. So this is not going to affect your profit. So these profits are fixed numbers. They only depend on how many types of both A and B you produce, provided that the limited resource is uh, met. Okay? Okay, let's try to set up our mathematical model. So I repeat the table of information here again, and uh, we introduce variables. Let's just call them A and B. That will be number of votes produced for type A and B on a daily basis. So everything here is uh, on a daily basis. And now we set up a a profit function or your gain function which we will try to maximize we call it F A and B so we know if we produce a boat A we get fifty dollars so this will make us fifty A as profit and then for B is sixty times B will be our profit so adding them up is our total profit so we want to maximize the function f, a, b, but we have constraints. The constraints come from the um, limit of our resources. Let's list them. First, look at the aluminum. We say the uh, maximum amount is 2,000 pounds. So for boat a, I will have 50 times a aluminum to use. And for boat B, if I produce B numbers of boat, the aluminum I will be using is 30B. So the total consumption of aluminum is the sum of them. And this has an upper bound of 2000. It cannot exceed that amount. Okay, so once uh, you have done that, and you know the rest is similar. For the machine time, I will have 6A coming from boat A and 5B coming from boat B and add them up, it should be restricted by 300. And the last constraint from the resources for is uh, the finishing labor. So boat A takes 3 hours, so the total time will be 3A and boat B takes 5 hours, so it's 5B and I add them up, this has to be less than 200. And finally, we always have to remember that A and B are number of boat being produced. So they are positive, so they cannot be negative. So we always have this constraint, no negativity. Okay, so there you go. You have your mathematical model now. Maximize this function subject to all these constraints. Okay, so um, in the next model, um, we will take this model and make it a bit more complicated and see what we can do. Okay, so this is example 2.3.2 in the textbook. It's built on top of the previous example by adding a layer of uh, complication. So let's say um, the price for the aluminum is not fixed. Okay, So the price for the last 500 pound is higher than the first 
1,500 pounds. It's higher by 20 cent. So the profit function is computed at a lower price. But if you want to use the last 500 pounds, you will have to pay 20 cents more. What does it mean is that 20 cents per pound will have to be taken out of your profit. So how do we adjust our model? Okay, so what we can do is uh, let's try to introduce a new variable. We call it capital X. This will be the amount in pound of the aluminum we will use above this 1,500 pounds. Okay. When that is introduced, then we have to adjust our profit function. So in the profit function, we'll have an additional term. So if you are using more than 1,500 pounds of aluminum by this amount of X, this will give you a reduction in your profit function. That's minus 20 times X. So here we highlight the difference in color red to catch your attention. Next, let's look at the constraints. So we still have the constraints of limited resources. Aluminum, machine time, finishing labor. Those three um, inequalities are unchanged. What is new here is a constraint regarding the new variable x that we introduced. So we know that x will not cannot be larger than 500, so we have a constraint, capital X is less than 500. Okay, and then the last one, the non-negativity one, A and B are both positive, and we also must have X is also bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so um, take a look at this and think about it. So we introduced a new variable X to adjust to the new situation. And then we make sure all the constraints are adapted and we end up with a new mathematical model here. Okay, um, here is a textbook reading assignment. After this, you should read the example 2.3.3 in your textbook. Okay, have fun and see you later.